Imagine if I could, in the next 10 minutes, give you a concept or two that could help you improve three of the five key indicators for long-term personal success. Would that be worth your time? Okay, it's exactly what I'm going to do. When I first heard about um, the, this series, you know, make it happen is really, you know, invokes the idea of, of action. How do you get into action? And the concept of, of Willis, um, I, I maybe should apologize because I, I, the sentences that start with I from a presenter is not my favorite thing. Okay? I don't want this to be about me. I want this to be about, about you and ways that, that, that we can deliver some things. Um, so real quick, the, the, the five indicators of long-term individual success. IQ, sorry, can't help with that a whole lot. Right? Conscientiousness, personal network, individual skills, and, and um, I'm sorry, and personal interest. Notice that the fourth one, those are in rank order. The fourth one is what employers tend to look for first. Okay? What, kind of, what kind of skills, unique skills might you have is what they look for first, first when in fact it's fourth on the list of, of skills uh, of, again, indicators of long-term individual success. So uh, again, the context, um, I'm going to try to avoid, I just did it again, sentences that start with I, although in the wish I'd learned it sooner, I kind of have to default a, a little bit to that. So if you saw the title of tonight's talk, um, it was obvious to me as soon as I saw that that acceptance was the right subject for me to talk about. And you're saying acceptance, how in the world does that have to do with, you know, you know how do you apply the concept of acceptance? Well, let me, let me explain this. I, I believe we do a pretty good job uh, at uni university level and even below that and beyond at helping people understand uh, what to do, okay, uh, to give you the skills to be good at specific functions, but we don't necessarily do a great job, or we could do a better job, at teaching you how to go about it and giving you the experiences and, and the basis as to ways to go implement those skills. Okay? And, and that's really what I want to talk about. So, so you know, how do we help you uh, do a good job at what you do? Um, how do you go about it? Uh, and again, how do you make it in more, in more recent terms, or more recent times, how do we help you with the skills and the tools that make it more rewarding, fulfilling, and frankly, more fun? Okay, so it's part mindset, but it's what those skills are. Now, also worth mentioning in my career, two concepts that were really important was how do you get to the root cause of a problem? And I think this, is, this clearly gets to that. And efficiencies, how do you become more and more efficient in what you're doing? I was also very involved in the concept of innovation and, and uh, adaptation uh, of sound business principles and practices into new opportunities, which involved a lot of risk taking. So how do you deal with that idea of taking risks and being successful at it? Um, and again, more, more lately, uh, in the last several years, it's become more important to people, more value on is it fulfilling um, do you feel you're contributing to society and are you having fun doing it? Now at ASU, it's worth mentioning, it's not just about the idea, right? but in my few years of work with, uh, with Brent and the ENI team, um, a lot of what ASU uses is evidence-based uh, entrepreneurship, if you will. Right? We're looking for what research is out there, are you talking to customers, are customers how are customers going to behave, and acceptance plays directly into that. So let me do this real quick. Um, I'd like you to think for a moment about someone you know, a sibling, maybe a parent, who's, who's got a college degree, right? Everybody got somebody in mind? How many of them are working in the field that their degree is in? One, two, three, about half, okay? You don't count your doctor. That's too, too recent. Yeah, okay, fair enough. For the students in the room, watch this. Okay, every third one of you put your hand up. So put, would you put your hand up? Maybe, or how about you be a student for me, right? So, so we got one over here and one over here, okay? Those two people will get a job in the industry in which they earn their degree, okay? The rest of you, 
will be working in an industry other than where you got your degree. Okay? It's the fact of the, the most recent work that's out there. So how do you deal with those challenges? Okay? If I say, you may be in engineering, but you're not going to get to practice engineering, how does that feel? Right? Um, how do you deal with, with those, those changes? How do you accept that information and do something about it? I think that, that as, as I define acceptance, it's awareness of facts, events, and situations without the application of judgment or emotional bias. Being able to say, you know, when you learn of something, okay, or, as we were talking earlier, it is what it is. Okay? And the reason I say that is because the sooner that you can do that, the sooner that you can eliminate that, that emotional bias, the sooner that you can be non-judgmental about it, the sooner you can recognize your options, make a decision, and get into action. Uh, now, this is applicable at all levels of your life, frankly, right? Um, when you talk about that, that concept of conscientiousness I mentioned earlier, conscientiousness is a momentary activity. Okay? It's people seeing you behave in a conscientious manner. Are you doing the right thing as you go about your day? Okay? But also at the business level, when you recognize that a competitor has released a new product okay, that may be beyond or in the same space where you thought you had a brand new innovation, what do you do with that and how quickly do you, do you adapt and act in a manner that can be competitive? Okay. It's worth making a comment about, about change. Anybody in here change their major? No? Okay. Imagine, though, if, if you had changed a major in your so, late in your sophomore year. Would you get credit in your new major for the, for the courses you took early on? Not in that specific discipline, okay? So the idea of that you cannot change events of the past okay, is an important one. The other thing you can't change, it's worth recognizing, are decisions and actions of others. Okay? So when we talk about acceptance, okay, two of the things we need to recognize very quickly is you can't change anything from the past, and you can't change decisions or actions of others. Okay? But you can make decisions and take action on things that um, would counteract those, would be competitive with those, or, or would, work, would work well with them. Okay? It's also worth mentioning that the other thing you can't change, gets a little philosophic here, but the other thing you can't change is this particular moment. Because as of now, that moment is gone. You can change the next moment, but it's at that detail level that you, you might consider how do you accept the situation as it is, with no judgment and no emotional bias, make good decisions, and then get into action. Okay. Again, whether it's momentary, or it's long term. Okay. So why am I sharing this? Okay. Why is this important to me? Um, I believe that, again, that this triangle, what I call a performance triangle of acceptance, of having, of identifying options and making choices for those and, and taking action to put those, those choices uh, in place is a cyclical thing that we go through every moment of our day, okay? And can be incredibly powerful if we recognize it and again, eliminate all the clutter around it. It allows us to avoid uh, distractions, things like too much drama, okay? It allows us to not waste nearly as much time. We can get into the proper type of action uh, more quickly. Also allows us to um, to more rapidly identify the root cause of problems. Okay? Again, eliminating the clutter. Okay? Um, it also, because of the elimination of, of that, what I'll call clutter, it has long-term improvement of physical and mental health. You're, not, you're dealing with less stress, anger, doubt, guilt. All of those negative emotions can be somewhat controlled and diminished, and again, allowing you to have productive um, progress, make progress in whatever endeavor you're, you're pursuing. Okay. It allows you to improve relationships with people. I mentioned that uh, personal network is one of the key indicators to long-term individual success. How do you improve those networks? Okay. By accepting folks for who they are, for, 
for, uh, for their contribution and engaging with them in a manner that is productive to you and your organization. And lastly, it allows you to be more present. Um, there's, a, there's a great concept of, of presence and it's not about do you own the room so much as it's about are you aware of your surroundings, are you aware of your environment, are you in a position to be able to perform at your best and there are some very specific techniques that can be, that can be learned and, and practiced in order to do that, again, for uh, improved performance. Um, so, in closing, I mean, I would really invite conversation uh, about, about this idea of, of acceptance and, if you'd like, about some of the things that can be done to actually implement this and the, the very specific things that you could do on a daily or regular basis to do that. And lastly, just share with you that from a Willis perspective, this concept of acceptance has come to me in the last several years is something that I not only wish I'd learned sooner, I wish I'd lived it sooner. So thanks for your time. Okay, so I'm going to bring us uh, from a philosophical state down to earth and business and commerce and, uh, and entrepreneurship. So just uh, to kind of find out how many of you in the room are either have a business or have an entrepreneurship, uh, aspire to be an entrepreneur or have business ideas, anyone? Okay, there is one right there. <laughs> All right, awesome. So uh, my name is Sean. I'm the founder of uh, Avantage. Uh, the problem we're out to solve is uh, slow times, unbooked hours, and empty seats for local service businesses. Uh, the average business has 25% underutilized capacity, meaning slow times, unbooked hours, and these are uh, uh, money and, and uh, revenue that le they leave on the table. So we're trying to capitalize and turn that into value. So meet Dr. Hessler, he's the Phoenix Suns chiropractor, and yes, that is Shaquille O'Neal. And uh, so he had a lot of slow times and empty uh, rooms during the off season or when the Suns are on the road. So he was trying to gain new customers and fill those slow times, and he was spending tens of thousands on marketing on Google, AdWords, Facebook, etc. He joined Avantage, he got new clients without spending any money. Isn't that awesome? You ask how? Introducing Avantage, a new platform, to a new way to grow your business without spending any money. On Avantage, local business owners connect, promote, and collaborate uh, by trading and exchanging their excess capacities and slow times. <clears throat> so Dr. Hessler, he used this one-page form and he posted his offer in, in five minutes uh, for a, some sort of a, a chiropractic treatment. It's very simple title, uh, description, and the value of the offer, what you would normally charge in dollars. And uh, on Avantage, we use Avantage Bucks, which is our internal private currency, to keep track of the, each tra trade transaction, as well as to facilitate multi-party trades, so you're not stuck with one-to-one -one trades only. I can trade my chiropractic services with you, take those credits, and go and buy a video service from him. Therefore, it, it kind of liquid, it makes the marketplace a lot more liquid. <clears throat> and yeah, within minutes, his offer was posted in our marketplace, uh, to, visible to other local business owners, and with a push of a button, he was able to gain a new client, fill his empty room, and earn Avantage Bucks credits for that empty room that, that he had. And uh, in turn, he used the Avantage Bucks credits and purchased an SEO package and a video uh, a pro, uh, videographer for his business, and therefore promoting his business uh, further. <clears throat> now, the great thing about this is he didn't spend any cash. He, he used, utilized his empty room and he gained some marketing uh, uh, SEO services and videography. So to, to uh, cap it off, he gained, Dr. Hessler gained new clients that could turn into long-term patients. He filled his empty rooms that would have gone to complete waste anyways, and he earned Avantage Bucks currency, which he was able to pay for other services and saving his cash. All in all, saving his bottom line and increasing his profit. So this whole uh, trading and bartering economy is actually a huge market. There are currently 400,000 businesses in the U.S. alone. They, do, uh, they trade about $10 billion a year. And they do it across 500 different barter exchanges. These are clubs and, and membership clubs in different cities. Phoenix has three of them. 
<clears throat> and it's a very old manual process. It's phone-based, broker-based, and you businesses belong and they, they trade services. So uh, <clears throat> that's, but it's broken. It's very 1990s technology. <clears throat> but the trading economy should be much bigger. There are actually 100 million small businesses and uh, freelancers that face the same problem of slow times and looking for clients. So we believe, just like the Air, uh, Airbnb and the whole sharing economy, we can uh, unlock these underutilized capacities if we can build a trading economy platform that's easily, easy to use. <clears throat> so our go-to-market strategy is to go after the existing barter exchange members, 400,000 of them, 70 million freelancers, and uh, the 1 million Groupon merchants who are hurting because of the high fees and the disloyal customers that Groupon sends them. We've done that and we've successfully converted many of them into our platform. We also have an affiliate marketing program that we reward our members for referral fees, about 50 Avantage bucks for every referral. And we're also connecting with the whole local first and buy local movement, supporting local businesses. And it is working. <clears throat> so since our launch last October, we have over 800 members uh, signed up with 500 offers posted and valued at about $600,000 per month in trade value committed. Uh, our engagement is about 300 users per month, visit us at least uh, once a week, you know, about five times per month, and spend about 10 minutes on our site. <clears throat> our members love us and they want us to succeed. Uh, our revenue model is simple, 10% transaction fee. Uh, the average member is committing about $1,300 per month in trade volume, meaning in five years with 100,000 active members, our revenue will be north of $150 million, making us a billion dollar platform. Our team is awesome. Uh, I'm, the computer, I'm the founder, computer science alumni from ASU, and I did build a local company into a global platform using bartering and exchanging uh, services initially. That's where I got introduced to this concept. Rosie is our, uh, our uh, community manager, and Maud is our lead software developer and is an expert at what he does. So our ask today is join our movement, spread the word, let any freelancers, creatives, influencers, or local businesses uh, know about our platform. We do give 200 Avantage bucks when they sign up and 50 Avantage bucks for any referrals. It's been a pleasure and I'll take any questions you have. Great job. Thank you. Thank you.